hear me over there? What a beautiful day to celebrate our nation's birthday. Holly Christensen, the uh, captain of our color guard, informed me that he has done this for 31 years, except for one year. One year it was born in Sunbury to cancel it. My name is Dennis Norton. I'm a member of both the American Legion and the VFW Post. Again, welcome. Uh, we're going to do about the same program that we have always done. Try to be out of here in maybe 20 minutes for those of you people that are in the sun. So if I can have you all rise at this time. Join me in paying tribute to this great nation with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated, please. Before I introduce the Catholic Rosenberg, I'd like to welcome all veterans who are here. Also, pay tribute to one of our veterans, Post 333, Bob Aaron. Bob Aaron was a past chaplain for the Wisconsin Department of the American Legion, he's a member of Post 333. At this time, I'd like to bring Harry Rip forward. He's by Thomas Jefferson in Washington, D.C. on March 4th of 1801, a prayer for the nation. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable ministries sound learning and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord and confusion, from pride, arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the united, the multitude brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endow with our spirit of wisdom those whom in thy name we entrust, the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All of which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Cover.
At this time, it's my pleasure to present our keynote speaker today. Richard Barden is presently serving his second term as commander of American Legion Post 333, Sun Prairie. Commander Barden has held various positions in the American Legion at the post, county, and district levels. Commander Barden has volunteered with fundraisers in the post and the Department of Wisconsin. His qualifications for the American Legion is through four years of service in the United States Air Force from 1972 to 1976. Richard Barden has worked in the civil engineering field for over 30 years with 19 years with the Department of Transportation. He is married to his wife Diane for 30 year, 38 years. They have four children and 12 grandchildren. It is my pleasure to introduce Richard Barden, Commander of American Lease, Legion Post 333. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody this morning? Good. 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 Today we celebrate the birth of this nation, and I offer this excerpt from the Declaration of Independence as a reminder of the meaning of today. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their, their just powers from the consent of the governed. Then whenever any form of government becomes uh, destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to then shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. In this, the Founding Fathers established that all humans have basic rights, that of life, liberty, and happiness. They also established the power of government by, is, the government is by, the, by consent of the governed, and that governed have the right to remove the government when they feel those basic rights are threatened. July 4th, 1962, President John F. Kennedy, speaking at Independence Hall in Philadelphia, made, made a clear understanding of the responsibility of the people. Thus, in a very real sense, you and I are the executors of the, testament, of the testament handed down by those who gathered in this historic hall 186 years ago today. For they gathered to affix their names to a document which was above all else, a document not, a re not of rhetoric, but of bold decision. It was, it was, it is true, a document of protest, but protests have been made before. It is set forth, in their, it is set forth in their grievance with eloquence, but eloquence had been heard before. But that, but what distinguishes this paper from all others was a final irrevocable decision that it took to assert the independence of, of the free states in place of colonies and to commit to that goal of their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Each person that affixed their name to the, to the Declaration of Independence did hold to the promise of commitment of life, fortune, and, and sacred honor. They lost their land their fortune, their families, and were put to death. Today, across the nation, we gather to celebrate the birth of the United States of America with fireworks, parades, music, and festivities, and Fourth of July speeches. However, if the words of the Declaration are used to, the, to profit just one element of humanity, or, or the government, then it is our duty to make sure that, that the checks and balances of government is used and changed, but it is not, or the government itself. The inalienable right of the Declaration of Independence is granted, has granted for our future and ourselves. Today is not about parades and marketing sales, fireworks and picnics. It is about the character of this nation, the character of us. The Declaration of Independence remains the foundation of this nation 
and a reminder to all nations that we the people will forever be the governing force to this nation. Thank you for the privilege of speaking to you today. The prayer I'm about to offer was offered by George Washington on the last day in office before he left service and went back to a civilian life. Almighty God, we make our earnest prayer that thou will keep the United States in thy holy protection, that thou will incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of cooperation and obedience to government and entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States of America at large. And finally, that thou will most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, and to humble ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion, and without whose example in these things we can never hope to be a happy nation. Grant our prayer, we beseech thee, O God, Amen. We're now going to offer last rites for our departed veterans.
Could be seated now. We're about at the end of the program, but some interesting things. 241 years ago, and however you count a generation, that's probably nine or ten. And this document was signed. It actually was not signed on July 4th. It was signed on August 2nd. And there is more than one copy. In fact, there are about 26 copies. The last two copies were just found. Six signers of the declaration that were actually born in Great Britain. I found this all on the internet. This is interesting. There was one signer. His name was uh, Richard Stockton. He signed it, but he la later recanted it. And what happened was he was arrested and thrown in prison by the British. So he uh, recanted the. Uh, declaration and uh, swore allegiance to the king. One of the most interesting things I did find was, uh, remember the movie National Treasure with Nicolas Cage? It was supposed to bet a map on the back of the de declaration. Well, there was a writing on the back of the original parchment. And it says, simply written upside down, the original Declaration of Independence dated 4th July 1776. The reason it was on the back was during the uh, Revolutionary War, they would roll the parchment up and carry it back and forth in very safe places, so that's how the inscription was written on the back. So, as you leave today, we'd invite you to visit the cemetery on top of the hill. Take a look at the memorial. The names are inscribed on that memorial of the veterans that are buried there. There are veterans from the War of 1812, the Civil War, and so on. That concludes our program. Again, thank you so much for coming. We'll see you again next year.